It does. I was struck by how an artist usually lives where you, where one might closet, you closet yourself against the world in order to concentrate on your work and, and make a body of work without too much outside interference. But in the COVID era, everyone was closeted. And some people reacted in a really wonderful way. It made them very creative. And other people um, felt trapped like rats and were, couldn't wait to get out. So I, I felt a connectedness with the whole world during the process of others feeling like artists feel, um, an intense period of introspection and concentration and focus. So that's what I was thinking about. And roaming inner, inner realms, some people had gardens, so their realm spread out, you know, and, and they could take their inside outside. Other people lived in a small apartment in, in New York or in San Francisco, and they might have a window where they could experience the outside world during the, the period of total shutdown. So it was about roaming in, in your imagination, in your mind's eye, where it takes you. Many years ago, I started painting animals in my paintings. And I think it was because I grew up in desert communities where we were allowed as children, my sisters and my brother and I, just to wander freely all day long. And so our world was really huge. And we'd go out into the desert and it would look like there was nothing there, but there were snakes and jackrabbits and lizards everywhere and spiders and you name it, all, all these animals. So I became very interested in just wildness, first of all, and loving wild creatures and how they're living wild out there in our, we call it our world, but they have this whole world of their own if we allow them to, where they, they live wild and free. And so that was one of the things I, that I, I wanted to show in my paintings, just kind of a, a wildness and our connection to that that wildness. So there's there's tame animals and there are like the iguana that just happens to run, you know, run in through the scene or be in a tree. And the birds that sometimes are the only wild creatures that ever touch someone's life. You know, a, a bird flutters in and you're like, wow, you know, I am connected to this whole outside world. So I like to show that, that connection and the fact that we're not alone and that we share the world with, with other creatures. For me, the, from the time I was a, a girl and was riding horses and around horses, there were always I'd go to the junkyard with my brother and they'd be using donkeys as weed control to keep the, the weeds down around the cars. And so I got used to being around them and noticing their characteristics. And, and then as I started traveling, everywhere I went in the world, there were donkeys being used to pull carts for transportation. Um, they were very much a part of people's everyday lives in a way that horses might not be. You know, maybe they, people couldn't afford a horse or um, for whatever reason. And I saw how strong they were and patient they were and um, hardworking. So they became kind of a symbol for strength of character in my paintings and something that's really steadfast and dependable. And I even, uh, when I was doing the show, I looked up how the Democratic Party came to have the donkey as their symbol. And it was this really convoluted uh, reason that had to do with comics that were printed in papers uh, 150 years ago. And so there, were, there was no real connection to the symbols that I use it for. 
So, um, but uh, it's out there. And um, so they, I, I put them in my paintings for that reason, just for cour courage and strength and dependability. Yes, yeah, um, since, the, since she was a little girl and I was in art school, I started painting her every year. And so whatever is happening with her uh, that year shows up in the painting. So it's whatever color her hair is, and it's been a million colors. Um, and how she's feeling, you know, psychologically or physically usually shows up because it's pretty much a true likeness of, of her that year. And this year it was particularly, she bought, online she saw this headband that was like the Statue of Liberty with stars all around it. So she bought it and she put it on and she's been wearing it around, just encouraging people to vote, reminding people that, you know, you should vote for whoever you vote for. And so that's why she's wearing it this year. And, and she chose a red, white, and blue dress to emphasize that, just to be her own uh, campaign you know, poster for voting, not for a particular candidate, but just for exercising your constitutional right to be heard, to express your opinion and your voice. No, no, this is how she showed up. So she, um, she choreographs a lot of her life because she's a performer. So her, her life is very much about how she visually presents herself in addition to how her voice sounds because she's used to being on stage and being videotaped. So for a long time now, she's very careful about how she presents herself. And I appreciate that about her, that it is a part of her persona. Um, her, she's able to express her character and what's important to her at that particular time. And it also highlights the strength of her work too. Since 1988, my first solo show, um, I painted a painting with four sisters. And it just became a tradition for me that every show, I paint a, a painting of myself as one of four sisters. And some, year, it, some years, it's actually something that we've really done and a place that we've really gone. And other years, it's where we'd like to go or where, where we imagine ourselves or something that I feel is important that, that I highlight. So this year we were all very introspectively working in a garden and each sister very much focused on their area of the garden, but also symbolizing their, their part of the world or their, their inner realm. And I felt really lucky this year to have a garden to be out there and be able to um, to be free to, to work in the dirt. It was very therapeutic, as, as I know it has been for millions of people. Well, First of all, that the size that they are, uh, the paintings themselves are 20 by 16 inches, and it's a size that um, that I've always loved to work personally to paint portraits. There's something about that scale that works very well for me for um, for expressing uh, the the character of an individual. Um, a, the relief map of the face. Uh, 
I'm able to add enough information to make the paintings interesting for me. In this series, detail of their, their clothing and their jewelry, um, which is different for me. I don't usually paint that much jewelry in, within paintings. But for this series, it was almost an ode to portrait painting of the past, where painting someone's jewelry was very important. It showed their status in society, uh, their wealth, um, a particular heirloom. Um, so I was thinking about those things when I painted this series, but also uh, the whiteness of their face and the darkness of the background, the stark lighting, was definitely about the battle of light and dark. And in the midst of winter, when I painted these paintings, it was about the victory of light over darkness and how it, it always turns to the light. Um, that was another thing I was thinking about when I was painting them. Ultramarine violet uh, against a white background and um, with a little ultramarine blue in some of them, a little Prussian blue. Um, I was thinking about the time of year because amethyst is for the end of January and the month of February that the stone that is associated with that time of the year and so that that was something that I wanted definitely to, to play off of and it, it worked so well for the mood of of that dark winter of just being able to encapsulate it about how the figures might feel being alive in that time of the year too. I and mean, this was pre-COVID, but it was still, you know, a stark, dark, cold winter. So. Well, I've always loved to, to work in different mediums, and I feel really great about being able to take, to borrow from one way of working. I've, I've done a lot of pieces where it was strictly embroidery and, and the beadwork. And then I thought, why not? With those dark, you know, amethyst backgrounds, wouldn't it be great to have some star-like images in the background? And so I just played around with it to, um, in a few of them, just to see what it would be like. It, I felt so free to experiment for this show. Um, I'm not sure why, but it just felt like there was no reason not to, and so many reasons just to, to try new things. So crossing over that, that boundary with the embroidery and the beads into the realm of oil paint, which is a very structured um, environment, of its own, I, it felt really freeing to do it and, you know, really liberating, strangely. So um, I love mixing the medias. And I think that was the last crossover. I had um, added the beads to embroidery and um, mixed glass with the oil paint for the, in the donkey piece that's up on the wall. So there have been a, a lot of crossovers within the, the mediums. Mm -hmm.